billion is nine trillion. That's three trillion dollars. So in human costs, a billion. Uh, uh, a, 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 thousand, million, a million people getting exposed. If the cost is even a million dollars per person, that's um, yeah nine. That's that's a that's a trillion dollars. Yeah. So there's one trillion dollars in death, human life. Yes. Between one and five trillion dollars, right. depending on the the actuarial value is what we're guessing. Between one and five trillion dollars of death right. in Japan. Right. Okay, I, I've just recorded that. So thanks. Uh, what is the human cost of Fukushima? Do you think in terms of human casualty and 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 life? And that's the problem that people have under to understand. I mean, you've been brilliant on the technical side of things, but no one can grab around this silent killer. It's like high blood pressure of of energy. Mm -hmm. What what do you think the human cost is? Well, I think, um, and I'm sure the, uh, the the nuclear lobby will call your show and say I'm totally wrong. But I think that the 20 year cost of um, from Fukushima will be about a million cancers. And I, I base that on um, studies that came out of Three Mile Island. And despite what you hear, people did die at Three Mile Island. Uh, Dr. Steve Wing has done a brilliant epidemiological study that shows about a 20% increase in lung cancer three to five years after the accident. And uh, so that's just, and that was small compared to, uh, uh, to Fukushima and in a much lower population density area as well. So what will happen is first you'll have thyroid cancers and, and thyroid abnormalities. Um, then you'll have lung cancers. And then you get into that period when you'll have um, organ cancers and leukemias and brain cancers and things like that. You know, the problem is it's a statistical crapshoot. The, um, the chance of, uh, you, you'll never be able to prove that I got my cancer from smoking and you got yours from Fukushima. It, that there's no way of, of uh, detecting that. But we will see a statistically meaningful increase in cancers in Japan as a result of this. Really? And uh, these are small, per uh, small particulates that you're talking about. I think you used the term, were they gnats, radioactive uh, gnats, I think you used once? Fuel fleas. Fuel fleas. So <laughs> how? that's what people are taking a, um, a Geiger counter. They're putting on food and saying, okay, my food is safe, but they're not considering particulate matter. What is a particulate, nuclear particulate, and how devastating could a small particulate be to you? That's, that's the key to the, uh, the whole discussion. The Japanese right now are measuring airborne dose. And they're walking around with their decimeter and, and saying it reads whatever. But that's an airborne dose from what's on the soil, what's been previously deposited on the soil. And it doesn't take into account any of these internal exposures from hot particles that either get in your GI tract or in your lungs. We've got uh, pictures of kids' uh, sneakers loaded with cesium. And you know if it's on the sneakers, it's in their hands, and their hands are in their mouth. Um, it's, um, I'm certain that the body burden of cesium on, in kids in Fukushima Prefecture is quite high. The net effect of that, you can't measure that because your body self-shields. So if that's deep in your lung, there's, you know, there's mass between your lung and uh, where the detector is, and you won't find it. That doesn't mean it's not there. We, um, we also saw on the first week of the accident, there's a couple other nasty gases that disappear very quickly, xenon and krypton. And the concentration in air was astronomical, and, which means that the concentration in people's lungs were astronomical. Uh, the net effect of this is there's got to be you know, significant increases in cancer in, in the Japanese population. So you think a million people would be a reasonable estimate. So we have a 9-11, which is 3,000. We have uh, Bhopal, which is 3,800 or so, and 200,000 injured. And then we have Fukushima, which is a potential impact of of a million people. Is it limited to just Japan or was there radiation particulate matter worldwide? Um, you know, we're at a point where you can't run, you can't hide. The, um, the, after Japan, the, the next hottest area is the Cascades, the Pacific Cascades. Um, a lot of that radiation came across the Pacific and um, hit the mountains, hit the, hit the Rockies and deposited on the west side of the Rockies. 
we've seen uh, readings in the Portland area of about 100 disintegrations per second in a square meter. So three by three has 100 disintegrations per uh, second of cesium-134 and 137. Now, Japan has thousands, so it's much less than Japan. So the, the issue is, in Japan, it's a personal problem. You know, you can... You can do things in your life to minimize the risk, and you can certainly get checked frequently so that if you get a cancer, it doesn't turn into a lethal cancer. In the U.S., it's different because the, the exposure is a lower level but spread out over millions of people up and down the West Coast. So I think the, um, we'll, we'll see over time a statistically meaningful increase in cancer on the West Coast. But I don't think we'll be able to um, compare by any means to what they got in Japan. So what is the cost to Japan? We had talked about that. What's the, if we're trying to make it an economic cost, we, we can't cover the cost of, can, of a million cancer deaths over time. That's immeasurable. But what's, what's the cost? Well, the, the Japanese are averaging it out to say that the electric bills are going to go up by about three cents. Uh, not yen, but since as a result of Fukushima, I actually think it'll be higher than that. In other words, they'll amortize the cost of the Fukushima accident over the entire population and raise everybody's electric bill the equivalent of three cents. That's a lot of money because there's an awful lot of, of megawatts. But I think that the, the cost is something on the order of more than 200 billion US dollars. And the Japanese aren't willing to say that. They've said, well, between now and the summer of of 2012, it's going to be 13 billion, and I think it's going to be you know water torture trying to get the the entire number out of here. There's a lot of pressure to keep TEPCO Tokyo Electric um, financially solvent, and um, so what they're doing is rather than nationalizing it, selling the assets and using that money to um, keep to, to pay for a lot of the things we've been talking about. They will continue to drizzle out enough money to keep TEPCO alive. Now, with the cleanup, are they going to be able to clean up this 20 square mile area? And is it, really 20, is it really 20 square miles or does it go all the way up to Tokyo or does it go out to the sea? What exactly is the geography and is that ever recoverable? Well, what they're talking about is um, removing as much as um, five, five centimeters or two inches of soil throughout the Fukushima prefecture. Now, this is a state. Uh, if they did that, they would fill about 50 New Orleans super superdome fulls of, um, of radioactive soil. That's just for Fukushima Prefecture, and that doesn't include some of the areas nearby, which actually are, are higher exposure. So the question, nobody wants that waste. So now some Japanese um, uh, scientists have said, well, we can put it in boats and take it out in the ocean and dump it. The problem with that is that the Japanese are a signatory to something called the London Dumping Convention, which prohibits dumping at sea. Now, what they're doing to get around all of this is they're, um, they're dumping it in dump trucks into Tokyo Bay and using it as landfill. So um, eventually, all this radioactive material is, um, is not being uh, monitored or and is certainly not being retained in any kind of a uh, geologic uh, fashion, but in fact, is getting dumped in Tokyo Bay. I mean, to me, it's it's unbelievable because I I view the the spent fuel is almost more dangerous than the uh, reactor itself. And a forty year old reactor, you and I have already covered this. You wouldn't get on a jet plane with that rate of failure. Yeah, there would be no aviation in the world yeah. with that now, rate of failure. One of the things that's happening here is the Japanese never had any plan for a spent fuel repository. They're years behind the United States, and of course the United States is years behind Europe. So now they're forced into admitting that we may not be recycling all of our nuclear waste. Where are we going to put it? In a high seismic country. Um, that's a uh, That's a can they've been kicking down the road for a long time and there's again billions and billions of dollars on what to do with that spent nuclear fuel that the japanese haven't even begun to think about